Hola, guys, welcome back. Okay, so this is going to be short, sweet, to the point, right? So again, if you haven't watched any of these yet, yo soy Katie, I'm Katie. I'm the Spanish teacher up here in the academy and this is going to be my third lesson for fifth year Spanish. This is aimed towards the day school students but obviously going to be very handy for anyone who's in fifth or even sixth year because we're actually going to be looking at a leaving cert exam question, guys, okay? So, um, basically all you're going to need for this lesson before we get into our verbs and everything, You'll we'll either need to have examinations.ie open, you will have, or you can't even use your exam papers because this is quite an old question. So examinations.ie or maybe pocket papers or something that you can just have the question out and ready to go for reference, okay? So we're going to look at the, the 2007 diary entry, okay? But again, before we get into that, let's have a look at our verbs for the day. So we've got, I went, it was, it would be incredible. I could come to the party and I will have more clothes. So if you watched um, the last lesson that we had there on the future tenses, you'll see, or you should be able to at least recognise now, I've got conditional, I've got um, conditional as well, and then I'll have the distant future, okay? So maybe just have a look at your notes for that if you're finding those a little bit difficult, okay? So, just while you're filling those in, let's have a look at our frase del día. Okay, so the verb is estar espeso, o estar espesa, um, si eres chica, claro, okay, so if you're a girl, you use espesa. Um, and that is used like in the sense of like not having a very clear mind, kind of having a little bit of brain fog, maybe being very overwhelmed, not being able to think properly about things, okay? So I think that's a lovely phrase to have that we can maybe think of getting into our answers for next year for our oral exam or something, that um, maybe when you're stressed, or cuando estoy estresada, siempre estoy espesa. So when I'm stressed, I always have brain fog, okay? So just to kind of show you an idea that you could use that with. All right, so if you have paused or tried any of these verbs, right, let's have a look and see really quick. So I went, fui. Single, one sort of event in the past. This is the verb ir, in el pretérito indefinido, so just in the normal past tense. Okay, it was, era, or fue, so both of those are ser. Okay, era is the imperfecto and fue is the pretérito indefinido as well. So this is the verb ser and the verb ir follow the same conjugation. So fui, fuiste, fue. Fuimos, fuiste, se fueron. Follow the same conjugation patterns in the pretérito indefinido. It would be incredible. Okay, so if I look at this sentence, well, I know that my keyword is would, so I know that my verb is going to be in the conditional. Now, the verb that I'm going to use for to be, I'm going to use the verb ser because I've got an adjective here. And I use the verb ser for descriptions. Okay, so I'm going to add my endings to the name of the verb. So sería. And then incredible in Spanish is very similar to the English, but there's one little difference. There's no D in the one in Spanish. Okay, increíble. Okay, so sería increíble. I could come to the party. So if I want to say I could, I'm going to use the conditional of the verb to be able to. So podría. For it to come then is venir. A la fiesta. Podría venir a la fiesta. Okay, and I will have more clothes. So another verb to have is tener. And again, the, both of these are from our kind of list of irregular verbs that we had in our last lesson, okay? So I will have is going to be tendré. So I've got that irregular stem, but it's still going to follow the same endings. So tendré. Now, and the word for clothes in English is obviously plural, okay? So I would talk about um, clothes as a plural thing, whereas in Spanish, even if it's talking about more than one item of clothing, I'm still going to use it as a singular noun, so I would say tendré más ropa. Okay, so ropa is clothes, it's not like one piece of clothing, it's just the noun in Spanish happens to be singular. Okay, so now, guys, we're going to have a look at this diary entry, I'm going to work through this with you, I'm going to go through a sample answer on the board, so um, you might want to even just try and scribble this down as we're going through, and then if I mention anything, you'll be able to highlight it as we go through it, okay? So we're going to look at the, the 2007 question because it's a little bit lighthearted, I suppose, in this very dark, dangerous time, okay? So um, I'm going to read the question out first, okay? Sorry, I just have it on my iPad, so I beg your pardon for me being on my iPad in this class, but, you know, needs must. So we're looking at 2007 diary entry, okay? So this is question 2A. Now, this is going to be a 20 mark question, and I would say that in an exam situation, you should be looking at maybe 20-ish 20, 20 kind of minutes on something like this, okay? So my question is, your parents have just bought you a dog for your birthday, the dream, I would die. Like I would fully die if you're in my classes, you know, I love dogs, okay? So my parents have just bought me a dog for my birthday, oh my gosh. I had a diary entry in Spanish mentioning all of the following points, okay? So a description of the dog and your feelings, I'm getting it. Straight away, that's me, like I'm on cloud nine, I'm gonna die, happy lady, whatever. But then we have to read the whole question. 
problems in looking after the dog. So apparently we're not happy about this. And then my personal favorite point, instead of a pet, you wanted money. Because you need new clothes for your summer holidays. Okay, so a very random question, but something with a lot of good grammar points in it, but also a little bit lighthearted. We don't need to be so kind of um, deep into it the whole time. Okay, so if you have a look, sorry, I'm just going to grab my blue marker. Okay, if you have a look over here, right, this is how I would start looking at a diary entry in terms of the approach to it, okay? So like that, we've just read the question. Um, so I know what my content has to be, so I have to obviously answer all four points, okay? Now, in terms of context, right, so like that, if you look, if even think about how I just read that question. So I see that straight away, and I say my parents have just bought me a dog for my birthday. Straight away in my head, I'm like, Grant, that's going to be positive. But I need to read the whole question first before I can just decide whether it's meant to be a positive or a negative diary. The third point they're saying, instead of a pet, you wanted money. My answer is not going to make any sense then if I start off being like, what an unbelievable day, like I've had the best birthday ever, and then halfway through I just completely change my tone. Okay, so that's going to be my context, and then my content, okay, is going to be my four points. What are the buzzwords there? So again, we've obviously got the word for dog, the word for birthday, problems, that's them making sure that you know that the word problem, problem is a masculine noun, it ends in N-A for man, and the other joke that I tell, Problem is a masculine noun because men are the problem in our lives, guys, okay? Easiest way to remember it. Okay, instead of a party, you wanted money, so that's dinero, okay? And that might be something new for a lot of you is the words instead of. And then I need new clothes for my summer holidays. Okay, so my verbs are going to work through these together. I'm going to do my layout and my opening, and then this is exactly the face that we want to avoid Katie making. So we're going to proofread our answer at the end, okay? And that's quite literally what it looked like with no microphone. <laughs> right. So... If you haven't been in any of my grinds before, or any of my classes, whatever, um, this might be a little bit new to you. So I would call this, and I would do this with junior cert letters, um, I would do this with first years when they're writing their first piece of Spanish, anything like this, okay? So no harm in doing it in sixth year as well. I'm going to number where I need everything to be on the page, okay? So I would call this like a six station layout or something. So I've got six different things that I need to make sure are going to be in my answer, to have proper structure, and for my answer to read well, and to keep the examiner happy as they're reading it, okay? So the first thing I'm going to write is something to, to make it look like a diary. So let's say a day. So today is Saturday? Sábado, yeah. I really don't know what, what day of the week it is, okay? So Sábado with a small s, okay? Then I'm going to do a comma and then I might write the time or something beside it. Now I would always just write 22 horas, it doesn't matter, you can write whatever time you want. I would just go with that because I would imagine if you're writing a diary you're going to be writing it at the end of the day. So something that's like 10 o'clock is about as late as my, my life gets these days, so that's, that's me, okay? Now, part number three, guys, this is never, ever, 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 ever going to change. It doesn't matter if you are a boy or a girl, the word diary is a masculine name, so the word here has to be querido. You cannot say querida, yadio. Please don't name your diary, okay? Like, that's weird. it's weird enough as it is that we have to write a diary in Spanish, but, like, we don't need to start writing, like, hey, John. How's it going? And then at the end saying, like, write back, guys, the diary's never going to write back, so let's not do that, okay? So, querido diario, dear diary. Now, my opening. My, six, my fifth and my sixth years would know that I would just get them to start every diary with this phrase. Vaya dia. What a day, okay? And the reason for that is it's not negative, it's not positive, it's very neutral, so we can use it any single time we're writing a diary entry, which is great, okay? So, what a day. Vaya dia. Okay. So, and then my next phrase, again... Guys, we should know this from class, so I'm going to start off with a cabo de pasar, I have just had. Now, because I'm going to write a negative diary, I'm going to use the word peor, which is worst. El peor día de mi vida en heaven. I have just had the worst day of my whole life, because examiners love a bit of drama. Cabo de pasar, el peor día de mi vida en heaven. Now, if you're looking at this and you haven't been to any of my classes, or you've no idea what this kind of stuff means, um, that's a lovely little phrase to have because it's a lovely grammar like verb structure here. And I can also use this anytime I write a diary entry, but if I was writing a positive one, I would just use the word mejor here instead of peor, which would be the best. Okay? So cabo de pasar a peor de día de mi vida entera. Okay, so my parents have just bought me a dog for my birthday. So I'm going to say today was my birthday, so or today is. Oh yes. Mi cumpleaños. E, um, no, I would say four. I'll just say I'm this morning. So instead of saying during the morning, I'm just going to say this morning. Okay. So, hoy es mi cumpleaños y esta mañana.
So on this morning, esta mañana recibí mis regalos. Okay, so today is, my today is my birthday and this morning I received all of my presents. So that's me just putting my answer into context, making sure the examiner knows that I've understood the question in full and that I'm able to manipulate the question before I even get into the actual points, okay? So really nice way to try and kind of boost your answer up a little bit, help your answer stand out, okay? So this is my context, okay? So four, so I've got one, two, three, and then four is going to be, I suppose, the body of my text, the opening of the whole thing, okay? So, let's say, so hoy es mi cumpleaños. Esta mañana recibí mis regalos. Okay, so I'm going to then use the verb tener ganas de, which is the verb to look forward to. So tenía, I was, really looking forward to. Tenía muchas ganas. De. Recibir. Dinero. Y cosas especiales. I was really looking forward to getting some money and special things. Pero hay un problema. There is an enormous problem. Pero hay un problema enorme. And this is where I'm going to start answering these four points for my content. Okay, so mis padres. Me. Regalaron. So the verb to give a gift is regalar. Okay, so un regalo is a present and regalar is the verb to give a gift. So I'm going to put it into the past tense. So they gave me a gift of, so they gifted me. Mis padres me regalaron un perro. Okay, and the bit that I'm trying to express that is a little bit more dramatic or shocking is the only part of the sentence that I need to put the upside down question mark, upside down exclamation mark around. My parents bought me a dog. Now, you could also use the word cachorro. So, un cachorro is a puppy. Please don't use the word perrito, because perrito is a hot dog, okay? So, I mean, maybe you'd be even more annoyed if your parents bought you a hot dog, okay? Un cachorro is a puppy, okay? Mis padres me regalaron un perro. Okay, so, sorry, mis padres me regalaron un perro. Que desastre. So, what a disaster. Okay, so now I'm going to have a look at the first point here, so a description of the dog. So, el perro es muy grande. So we're going to keep this nice and simple. The dog is very big y ruidoso and noisy. Okay, la verdad, the truth, is that, es que... Now, I don't like him at all. No me gusta nada. Y estoy muy decepcionada, right? And I'm very disappointed. Decepcionada. Okay, and again, if you're a boy, you'll use decepcionado. Girls, you'll use decepcionada, okay? So la verdad es que no me gusta nada. I don't like him at all. Okay, so we're being very dramatic and I'm really disappointed. Okay, now, so I'm going to keep going with this point, I'm going to go into the second point now, but I'm going to keep it all together because it's all related, okay? So problems in looking after the dog. So I'm going to say I have to, so tengo que, or actually, do you know what we'll do? Instead of saying I have to, we're going to show off a little bit more. We're going to think outside the box, and I'm going to say I will have to, so I'm going to put my irregular verb again from the future. I will have to, tendré, okay? Ir de paseo con él dos veces por día. Y no tengo el tiempo, right? So I will have to walk him twice a day and I just don't have the time, okay? Y no tengo el tiempo. I don't have the time to do that, but I'll hacer eso. Okay, so tendré que ir de paseo. I will have to go for a walk with him. So ir de paseo is the verb structure we use in Spanish to say to go for a walk. Con él, with him. And again, if you're going to talk about him, make sure that you have the accent of that E because otherwise the word L we know just means the. So I'll have to go for a walk with him twice a day. 
I don't have the time to do that. No, tengo el tiempo para hacer eso. Okay, and then I'm going to just add one more little sentence in. So, además, um, además, tendré que, I will have to again, following that same structure, tendré que comprar comida especial para él. Okay, I will have to buy special food for him. Y es muy cara, and it's very expensive. Es una pesadilla. It's a complete nightmare. Okay, sorry, I'm just rubbing out the number five there and number six because I just want to make sure that I have enough space, okay? So again, just to run through this. So this is point number one and point two, okay? El perro es muy grande, so the dog is very big and noisy y ruidoso. La verdad es que no me gusta nada y estoy muy decepcionado o muy decepcionada. Tendré que ir de paseo con él dos veces por día. So por, I'm using here as per. And I don't have the time to do that. Además, also, or on top of that, I will have to buy special food for him and it's very expensive. It's a nightmare. Okay, so I'm going to start my next point now. I'm just going to kind of separate it so it's a little bit more logical for the examiner to read. So... Let's have a look and see. So instead of <laughs> she wanted money because you need new clothes for your summer holidays. Okay, right, so let's have a look at this. Okay, so I'm going to kind of make it sound like I've mentioned this in a previous diagram to you before. So I'm going to say, como ya sabes, so like as you know, um, voy a ir de vacaciones. So, voy a ir de vacaciones, I'm going to go on holidays. So, in Spanish, we say, I literally, I'm going to go of holidays. Okay, so just that's the structure, it doesn't make any sense, but that's what it is. So, voy a ir de vacaciones este verano. A Nueva York. So, to New York. Okay, en lugar de, so en lugar de, you might want to mark that for yourself, guys, if you're writing this down. That's how we say instead of in Spanish. Okay, so en lugar. Del perro. Okay, instead of the dog, right? So I want to say here now, um, I would prefer your, or I'll just say, preferir is the verb to prefer, and I'm going to add my endings here. Preferiría, I would prefer to have received the haber recibido. Dinero para el viaje. Okay, so instead of the dog, I would prefer to have received, so that might be a new structure for a few of you, that's to have received money for the trip. And um, necesito, I need nueva ropa, new clothes, y ahora. No sé qué hacer. And now I don't know what to do. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do, guys, I'm just going to scribble the last sentence over here just so you can screenshot whatever you need. Okay, so the last sentence then for number five is going to be my closing phrase. I just want to make sure I'm staying in shock, guys. I'm going to put that there. Okay, so I'm going to finish. So this is part number five. So, pues, ya está por hoy. That's all for today. Okay, so, estoy muy decepcionada, I'm really disappointed, sorry, decepcionada. Estoy muy decepcionada y quiero acostarme and I want to go to bed. And then part number six at the bottom of your page. I'm just going to write something like, hasta mañana, chat to you tomorrow, or until tomorrow, and your name. We don't need any X's or O's or smiley faces or love hearts or anything like that, okay? So guys, if you have any other questions on that, leave them down below in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Okay, so muchísimas gracias y que tengáis un buen día. Adios.